It's Comics are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time at the Ann Arbor District Library in lo lovely downtown Ann Arbor, right on the corner of 5th and William, at aadl.org. And uh, we, record, we stream live at comicsagreat.tv. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And with me today, well, this is a visual storytelling show where we talk about comics. We talk about how to make comics, how to think about storytelling in comics, uh, new media opportunities for cartoonists, but then we also talk about comics in libraries, and that's where I point to my guest, Sharon Iverson of the Ann Arbor District Library. Thank you for being here, Sharon. It's my pleasure. To introduce you, you've been on the show a couple times before, mm -hmm. uh, but we should, you know, sort of explain, and I've always introduced you as sort of like, you know, the, the, the dean of comics programming in this town, mm -hmm. in this area, for crying out loud. Um, but we'll explain what that means. Like, what what are all the things that you do involving comics in this area? You're a teen librarian, first of all. We I say am that. a teen librarian, and um, I'm obviously a consumer of comics um, to be able to book talk to kids out, um, it, both within the library and outside. Um, what else do I do with comics? I do um, a lot with the local Kids Read Comics. Um, and we, I just kind of keep my eyes open constantly because there are so many people in the area that are involved in comics that we want to snag them, bring them into the library. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm collecting names whenever we do programming. I'm collecting names and putting the word back out through emails to people. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So you you develop, co-develop, and execute a ton of programming, comics programming at the library, and this is more than just having an author talk, right? Because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. got coming up, uh, I think in a week or so, we got David Peterson of Mouse Guard coming to the Anniversary right. Library, right? Uh, and he's going to do an author talk, but mm -hmm. then you also do things like full-on hands-on workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, you co-developed, created the Comics Artist Forum. What what is that? The forum is just spun out of the fact that um, we were doing other programming in the summer with the six-week workshop that you were teaching, and I just noticed how kids were there to the very end or even afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't matter whether they were the, the social chatterboxes or the quiet ones just with their heads down drawing through the whole session. I just noticed they liked to hang around, and I walked over to you at one of the sessions, and I said, gosh, do you think that you know, they'd like to have an opportunity to get together, maybe more informally. Um, and you turn around and ask them right away and <laughs> hands shot up. Yeah. And so we started talking about um, doing a forum where it would be an opportunity for cartoonists, teens, and adults to get together. And um, also kind of on the advice of the person that I work with, Tim Grimes, to put programs together, he suggested that we incorporate guest artists along the way, and you were our guest artist for the first three months, kind of kicked us off. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Gosh, you know, the, the, la the last five years have been a blur. It they has. Really have, yeah. I, I was, yeah, I was looking at that last week, I was like, God, oh, yeah, didn't we have different people? It's Jersey again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you were on, you were on, and you really got us off on a great start, yeah. and then from that, people, we started pulling people that literally out of the audience for some of our guest artists mm -hmm. and um, other that's, people came. Yeah, in. that's the thing that we should point out. Is I mean, I, Ann Arbor is a unique place. Mm -hmm. We can, I, I think, most people will agree with that. But on the other hand, you know, it's not. It's not like there's like a different breed of human beings here, right? right. The people are people everywhere. I mean, right. I watch uh, the Muppets Take Manhattan. Peoples is peoples. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, I, I would assume that this would happen in just about any town if you set this kind of thing up. Uh, we saw such a mix of people where there were. You know, professional cartoonists there. Mm -hmm. There were aspirant cartoonists. There were kids who just enjoy comics. There were adults. I, the, the the one memory that really strikes me was when I saw a 65 year old woman, never drew comics in her life, but really was interested in them because she heard about them on the NPR or something. And she was sitting next to a 10 year old kid, and they were both drawing together, and they were talking about what they were drawing together. Right. And so right. you had such a wide variety, and we had sometimes like upwards of 40 people in that room. Like mm -hmm. remember Matt Fizell's yes. uh, forum that he hosted? Yeah. Uh, it was some, it was closing in on 40 folks that mm -hmm. came to that thing. And so, yeah, so it was an opportunity to also meet local cartoonists uh, that we could also bring in as guest speakers, right? So. Right, right. It's been phenomenal. And, and the draw for the forum, um, which runs kind of September through June, um, kind of opposite of our summer programming, has drawn people from Detroit, um, from 
Lansing. I mean, they've they've heard about us. We seem to be the only thing that they can come and make connections with other folks, and they show up. I mean, we just the last. Um, form we had, um, I met a young animator who's back in the area, and he's wanting to make connections um, and the, thought the forum might be the place, you know, that he can get his, start to get his name out. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like a networking opportunity, networking mm-hmm. opportunity, social opportunity, mm-hmm. and then also a learning opportunity all rolled into one event. Right. Super, super neat idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, okay, I want to talk more about programming a little bit later. Sure. Uh, the first things first, though, because I know I put out a call on Google+. Plus. Uh, just the other night when I was, you know, get, getting people geared up for this episode. I'm going to be talking to Sharon Iverson. She's a great resource, teen library, and at the Ann Arbor District Library. Uh, what are you guys curious about? What are you cartoonists out there curious about? Mm-hmm. And I got this question from Audra Furici of Nemu Nemu, N-E-M-U-N-E-M-U.com. She's going to be actually one of our forum speakers in February, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so From sunny Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. And, yeah, talking to us in February. Uh, yes. Oh, speak, and Rob Stenzinger of ArtGeekZoo.com is going to be our speaker in January. Right. And I already I cleared it with him. He said he's going to make sure that he's in front of a window so we can see uh, how awful the weather is because he's in Minnesota. Right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, so January we're going to have, like, this blizzard scene, and i got to right. talk to Audra about uh, making sure there's a window behind her so we can see the palm trees and the yes. volcanoes and everybody leaping and nice hugging. Nice breeze. Yeah. And, yeah. Actually, you know, most of what, what I hear from the folks I follow on Twitter who live in Hawaii is that it's ex- exceedingly humid all the time. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound so good. No, no. Yeah. Got to have dryness in the winter. Y- yeah. Watch the skin flake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Audra asks, she says, you know, are there any tips for self-published creators without distribution services to get their books into library collections? Is it to our advantage to contact libraries individually to raise awareness for, uh, of our books? You know, this is probably one of the biggest things. Let's, I'm going to frame this real quick. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about this because we were setting up for the show. Um, I personally believe that libraries are the, the front lines of getting your comic to a wider audience for a variety of reasons. One is that the tr- traditional direct market distribution system uh, is very closed. It goes to local comic stores, uh, although uh, you guys order from Diamond too, don't you? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, but but you know, when, when in my classrooms, I say to kids, like, who here knows where their local comic store is? And you know, usually 2% of the room raises their hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's different in Ann Arbor. Vault of Midnight has a lot of stature here. Right. Uh, you know, uh, I, hats off to them. You know, they mm-hmm. won an Eisner uh, for their store. But uh, not, not you know, when I'm going to other towns, I'm going to like South Lyon, I'm going to, you know, the Jackson area, uh, uh, the western side of the state, and I ask this question, and they're like, I don't know. And then I look, mm-hmm. I, you know, I look in the local listings, and there are none. So it's like, how do these kids find their comics? Oh, well, let's go to Borders. Well, you know, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, not but, anymore. I, I mean, Barnes <laughs> & Noble is what I mean, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or a lo- you know, God willing, a local bookstore, if they care. Actually, I just went to, what's that bookstore on the... West side of town over in the Westgate shopping mall. Nicholas? Nicholas. Mm-hmm. They have a comic section. I was mm-hmm. pretty happy to see that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you go to a local bookstore, to, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, okay, failing that, where can I go? Uh, I can go to a library. And let's also look at this. Comics are exceedingly expensive. Four bucks for a floppy issue. Okay, 15, 12 bucks for a collection, right? Mm-hmm. But that's not... The entry point for comics when we were kids was the low cost of entry, right? Right. Thirty five cents, ten cents, whatever mm-hmm. it was when we were kids, and uh, you know it used to be about the same price as a candy bar to get a comic book, and now it's four bucks. I don't think a Kit Kat's four bucks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so there's a lot of reasons why it's harder and harder for young and wider audiences to discover discover comics. And even people say, oh, iPads, iPads. Well, but then we've got these closed systems of these apps, right? Oh, I'm in this app. I'm in that app. That's a problem too. So and anyway, this is all to support my, my thesis that libraries are an important place to get mm-hmm. into. It's one of the last places where people can use have uh, access and discoverability to titles. I'm wondering if you can back me up on this point at least in one way uh, as a teen librarian – you see the graphic novel collection circulating. I oh, mean, are, yes. <laughs> are, the, are these kids brand loyal where they're like, I'm a Captain America fan and that's all I'm ever going to be and I'm not going to read anything else? No, you can't push that Naruto thing on me. You can't mm-hmm. push that biography of Anne Frank on me, right? Are they like that? No, no. I, I see, well, I work one night a week. I just finished a night um, last evening and in scooping up books, and that's where I think, you know, you can't even count checkouts as 
readings because kids will leave stacks of graphic novels around and you can kind of tell what you know what's been pulled out of the shelf and mucked around with and totally I think between kids uh, networking with each other and the discovery while they're going through the shelf looking for their favorite series they'll find some other individual isolated pieces and they're like whoa you know so mm -hmm. I definitely um, you know, if, if there's any space that we need to preserve shelf-wise in libraries, it's the graphic novel area and expand it. Yeah, yeah, it, actually. It, yeah, realistically, I mean, the that is growing and, and yeah, I mean, for for me, as we've, as I've become more acquainted with uh, area cartoonists, um, I'm constantly putting a bug in the selector's ear, who's another teen librarian, to order more books. Um, mm -hmm. You know, hey, we've got some people coming in to do programming. We really want to have, you know, more materials in. So, you know, I'm trying to, you know, really work that um, as much as possible to make sure that, um, you know, not only do the kids get the exposure to the cartoonist in the forum, but also then get an opportunity to discover them on the shelves as well. So Yeah, you've been really good about that. And this is something where I think you are um, a symbol for other librarians to look to. Uh, because not every, I, I do a lot of workshops at a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Not every librarian ensures that they have my book in their collection mm -hmm. uh, upon arrival mm -hmm. uh, for the workshop. Mm -hmm. And then you'll go, and you did this very early on. I mean, you don't have to do it so much anymore because kids here know who I am now. Mm -hmm. But early on, you would, it, at the end of my workshop, you'd parade around behind me holding the book. I'm, <laughs> it's in the collection, everybody. It's in the, You can check it out today. Right. And uh, I think as a result of that, uh, I... You know, I, I've, I've heard the grapevine that my book gets circulated quite a bit, and I saw a copy on the shelf, and it looked pretty ragged. Yes. <laughs> Which um, is every cartoonist's dream, you it's, know? It's time to do some replacement, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but, but okay, let's let's look at this. Uh, and I, I want to get to Audra's question in a second. Sure. I just want to build this point as to why we're even broaching the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a cartoonist. I, I sell you one book, and now 300 kids, 500 kids have read it. So what? That's money out of my pocket, right? That's the, all these kids, they read my book for free. So. I don't think so. I mean, you give away your comics online. <laughs> That's true. Um, first <laughs> off, but, but, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, they know your name. They're going to look for you in different ways. Um, I, I find when I watch the workshop weeks go by, um, and you don't, you don't really – talk a lot about your book, you'll reference it and stuff, mm -hmm. but as, as time goes by and the kids get to know you, if they don't know you already, it's like I see them walking up there and they're flipping through stuff, you yeah. know, and, and they're looking at your book and they're wanting, they're wanting to read it. So I think, um, yeah, maybe it takes a little money out of your pocket, but I think it's giving you the exposure. This um, is self-promotion, right? Right, yeah. that that they're going to be looking what's next, you know, what's coming next. Um, um, they're going to talk to librarians and bug them, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, what's coming out um, in the future, just like any other book. I mean... And, and another thing I've noticed is that the kids who read it in the collection and love it then mm -hmm. turn around and say, where can I buy it? I've had this happen more than a couple occasions, and, and it, gets, it gets dicey because I'm on library property. Like, can I buy your book from you? Uh, not here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to do that kind of business here. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but if you go to this place, you can get it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, yeah, more often than not, I would say at least 50% of the time when the kid checks out the book after the workshop, then they come back to me and they say, you know, where can I purchase this? Because there's a lot, a lot of layers to this, as you were pointing out. Right. There's a relationship that's been formed between me and that audience. Right. They had a good time in a room with me, you know, like I, I, I did some fun stuff on the screen and did some fun drawings, got them mm -hmm. excited about comics. That leaves them with a good feeling. And then they read this book that's not too bad. And right. so it's a huge self-promotion package, if talking in a crass marketing way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a reason cartoonists should try to get into libraries. It not, not only get their books in libraries, but physically get in libraries so they can perform some kind of workshop activity, talk, whatnot. Right, right. So, okay. Let's go to the question then. I'm an author, and I march into a library, and I walk up to the uh, circulation clerk, and uh, they say, do you have any books you'd like to check out? I say, no, no, as a matter of fact, I, I have a book for you, and here it is. I'm an author. You should put this in the collection. Chop, chop. That's how you do it, right? <laughs> 
Well, based on my experience, that probably isn't going to get the book on the shelf very quickly. Um, it'll, it may get carried back to a desk and lay there collecting dust for a while. It might Somebody might be, you know, thinking, okay, who's the selector? Because in our system, we have people who are selectors. I happen Explain to Explain what a selector is. Okay. Selector in, in our system are the people who are looking for the book reviews, uh, through book reviews, are looking for tips from people saying, hey, I want this book in our collection. And they hear about this through like library listservs, Kirkus reviews. Right. All the professional journals. Um, you know, through yeah, various lists and so forth. So there's there's all they're attuned kind of through li semi library channels and and publisher channels. You know, hey, this is something um, that you need to be. Or in cases like here, like Erin Helmrich, she's the selector for the yep. graphic novels. Yes, and she is a huge comics fan. That helps. <laughs> oh, it totally helps. It yeah. totally totally helps. And so, but even Erin has a lot on her plate. And so, you know, I'll I'll be pushing through stuff that because of meeting people you know so so there's a lot of word of mouth recommendation hey I hear so-and-so's got a new book coming you know want to be sure that you've got that on your order list um, kind of thing so it it's there's a channel back channel if you will of communication that's going on that probably doesn't um, mesh with a person walking right up to the desk and saying here's my brand new flashy book yeah. um, because a, we don't, you know, librarians usually read reviews or they want to at the very least preview the material, um, you know, to look, to look it over and, and go, oh, this, look, this does look like something of merit that we want to include. But they also take recommendations from a lot of people. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of building that relationship um, with library staff along the way that can make the big difference. Right, because they don't know you from Adam when you walk in there, and mm -hmm. and what's what's more is this. You're, what you're also pointing at, what I'm hearing at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you're talking about there's a procedure yes. to ordering books. There yep. is a selector. It's their job to do the ordering, and yes, they take input. Like you get to go to Aaron and say, "Hey, Aaron, you got to get this book. It's great." Mm -hmm. um, but she's the one who does the ordering. You can't just walk up to a circulation clerk or a bookshelf and say, hey, can you put this in the collection? Just, just slide it in there. Just, slide it, just put a sticker on it. Just put it in there. Mm -hmm. You know, It doesn't work mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. because there's an actual process to selecting, ordering, adding to the collection. There's people who do collection maintenance. Right. And there's a whole th – th there's an infrastructure there that it's, it is – uh, appropriately invisible to the public. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so right. it's like nobody's dumb for not knowing this. It's not supposed to be apparent, right? You're supposed right. to just come in and get the thing you want. Mm -hmm. But it, it to a self-publisher, you should become aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you should go to the appropriate channel to rec or to approach them about carrying your book. Mm -hmm. um, so this comes down to actually, you probably have to know your audience a little bit, I would have to imagine. Mm -hmm. Like I have to know, is this book... Um, for you know, a youth audience, is it an adult book or is it really primarily targeted at teens? There's three different librarians I'd have to approach about that, right? Sure. Well, actually, like in our system, you're in luck it, because Aaron is the selector for all levels, for oh, wow. youth, teen, and adult. Um, so, so it's simpler here um, than it may be in other in other library systems, but yes, I, I would say logically speaking, it's there's probably going to be a youth graphic novel selector, a person who also is a youth graphic or a teen graphic novel, and a person who does adult ordering. It, it kind of wraps all the other adult material, teen material, youth in. So yeah, um, yeah. be prepared to do a little homework on that. And usually, most libraries post their staff on their websites, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them do. Most mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're a public library, I think that they, they usually do. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, you could go in and ask a teen librarian, can I get the contact information for your selector? I would like to contact them and then give you their mm -hmm. email address, their, their right. work email address. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Because exactly. I know some people come in and they're like, hey, I'd like your phone number. No, you don't yeah. get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, what, you know, <laughs> I was trying to think as I read Audra's question, what, what was our first encounter like? And I can't remember anymore. You know, I'm having, a, well, 
I believe you were working in the system. I was. I was working at the library. That's not a secret. Uh, I worked as a shelfer at the Ann Arbor District Library for a brief time when my freelance work had dried up. Right. So, so, so he was on the inside, folks. That's right. And um, I think your wife was too. Yes. yes. Ann was. Um, I don't know how that first opportunity came up. It's just that <clears throat> as a teen librarian or a youth librarian, we're always looking for program ideas. And I think that you probably said, hey, I could do this for you. You're not bashful about offering things <laughs> like that. So so I think, you know, you <clears throat> just Actually, kinda... I was back then. I was really, I was oh, shaken. No, really? seriously, I was shaken. I had, I had no experience <clears throat> teaching at that point. I had huh. done a little bit. I had done a couple talks. Uh, I did one at uh, my alma mater. I, can you call it alma mater when you dropped out? <laughs> sure. <laughs> the place that I dropped <laughs> out from. Uh, <clears throat> but I did a talk there, and then I think I did one little talk someplace else. But I did not have much teaching experience under my belt at that point. So I'm sure if we would have videotaped those ones, we would see a very different performance between then and now. And that's an important thing to underline mm -hmm. for anybody who's listening who might be interested in approaching a library about doing some programming is that there is a – there's a Rubicon you cross there, uh, and it's terrifying. But then you once you're you know fully across it, then you'll get get a knack for it and a hang sure. it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I said I think I could do this thing, and we just did – this is another thing – I, I don't, I, I don't want to go too much into programming uh, because I want to save that sure. for like a full d discussion on how to do it, <clears throat> both from a librarian standpoint and a cartoonist standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but but this, was, this was how I got my books in the collection too, is that I did a small thing, like a, a one-off kind of right. comics workshop. <clears throat> yep. And uh, I think that you had the presence of mind to say, well, maybe we should add his comic to the collection mm -hmm. so, so, as, mm -hmm. so, so he doesn't come off like a sophist. <laughs> at the well, very least. Or, or I would say this, um, a, gentle, a gentle suggestion in that direction makes perfect sense because most librarians should know, you know, if you're going to um, promote, I mean, not, it's not only setting up the program, and, but you're going to promote that program that, that you can then say, hey, for example, we blog um, on our website a lot, you know, to have a live link to the, to the record of the book in the collection makes it, makes it legit. So, you know, to me, whether the librarian's thinking about that or all the scheduling and all the details, you know, to, to offer that gentle reminder is, makes perfect sense to me. So. Right, right. I mean, that's what as a as a cartoonist. I mean, you know, that's yeah. a nice time to say, oh, and did you know I have some books you might want to think about adding to your collection, so Which, on, so on. It, it's it's a two way street. This isn't any kind of like, oh, I got you guys over a barrel on this one because it it benefits me because it promotes me, but it benefits you guys because it gets your collection circulating. Absolutely. Right, and that's what you guys <clears throat> want. You want to buy books that are actually going to be used by the public. You don't want to buy a book that just sits there, right? That right. doesn't help anybody. So. Well, and and unfortunately in this day and age, if the book does not move, it will not stay. So it's yeah. one of those things that um, you know, books can go on forever, but yeah, we want to promote it. We want it to move because we want it to stay in the collection. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we should underline here, I w I, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm trying to characterize this whole situation because what we just talked about were there, there's some barriers to entry here. There's a mm -hmm. system in place, there's a procedure in place, and there's the right people to talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, to somebody who may be, uh, you know, only half listening or maybe is not fully aware of what we're talking about. I might say, oh, you're trying to keep out the little guy. You know, you're just trying to keep me away from the collection. You guys want to add interesting stuff to the collection, don't you? You want a broad and diverse oh, sure. and interesting collection. Sure. But the problem is that you can't just walk in and say, here's my book. I made it. Put it in the collection. You need more of an introduction. It's like, again, I'm going to make this, I've made this analogy a ton of times on this show. But uh, I think the thing that Tim Street, of uh, one Tim Street on Twitter said is that he said, Twitter's a cocktail party. You don't just go to a cocktail party and hand out business cards. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's my business card. Here, hey, we're networking. Uh you have to listen to the conversation, get involved in the conversation in a useful and helpful and meaningful way. So, too, you have to have some kind of social lubricant in place between you and these people that you want to work with. You have to form a relationship, and one way to do that is to start offering some kind of talk programming of some kind. It doesn't have to be anything as robust as a full-on workshop. Could we maybe like create like a bullet-pointed list of the different kinds of comics events we've de developed here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I I mean, we've had 
single programs on, you know, how to how to draw superheroes because there was a point when some of the films were coming out big time. And so, you know, librarians, again, are always kind of queuing up on stuff like that, you know, and and, you know, so how to make how to create a superhero character it could be a one off program. Um, you know, that that's just one example. There's so many different things. One one of the things we tried to do in the beginning was to cue in on more of the manga and anime and um, found that, that there was some success, but um, we also discovered that over time, if you don't have a dedicated person um, involved with that to kind of keep that rolling, it becomes... Um, it just becomes less and less popular. So somehow, Interesting. well, and and so it isn't just that Ann Arbor District Library offered comics programming. We brought in you, who are is a, you know your enthusiasm for comics is so huge that um, it just can't be denied. <laughs> um, and so and so like a tsunami wave, Jersey came into the library six years ago now. Um, it, it, it started with a tiny little wave, but but yeah. I what I'm trying to say is that um, you know you as a cartoonist probably need to bring a lot of that excitement and um, thrill and dedication, but also kind of match up if you can with a staff member who sees that and sees the value in growing that yeah. um, along the way. So, you know, it, it's kind of a dual partnership. Okay, okay, that's a good point, is that the cartoonist has to bring something to the table as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's true. I stuck with it, right? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we did a lot of little things, and sometimes the turnout wasn't as good as we had hoped. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes it was 30, sometimes it's 50, and sometimes it's 4, mm -hmm. right? That happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and some librarians I've talked to, this has happened, and I won't name names, but uh, <laughs> I think I told you the names. Uh, I, I walk into the library, four kids are there, and the librarian turns to me and says, well, I guess kids just don't want comics programming. Mm -hmm. And to which I said, oh, well, you know, what'd you do to promote it? And then they got a little, like, eight and a half by 11 sheet on the wall. It says cartooning class today right. in, in Helvetica, right? Right, <laughs> right. Know? Black on white, you know, and that's it. And I was like, wow, well, okay, you really did your homework on how to promote this to kids. But then but then, the, the, even even so, the next level is is that I tell these, these librarians in these cases, um, you got to do it multiple times. Doing a yes. one-off thing, you're not going to get 600 kids in the door because how many of your kids are using the library's website or looking at the bulletin board to find out what's happening next? You have to get the first group of kids in. They tell their friends. They tell their friends. That's how you grow an audience around the thing is this word of mouth. That's like the number one way to get the kids in there. Then once you got that constituency, then they start using the library website to find out about events. Right, right. right. So, yeah, I mean, as I look back, we started out with individual here and there programs. Yeah. That um, that that drew in kids. It may be blended in with other little, you know, cartoonists. Forgive me, but there's mm -hmm. themes that librarians are, you know, looking to um, fulfill. Sometimes <laughs> summer reading themes, you know. So so you're convenient to us because hey, you you match up with you know the summer reading superhero theme or the summer reading you know whatever theme, and that's you know that works in a convenient sense for a while, but then we began to, and it started with four years ago, I believe it was four years ago, with the first six week series yeah. of programming um, in the summer for teens with the, co we call it Comic Book Academy. Um, and and I, would, I would admit that we know that it it happened at a neighboring library the summer before. Oh, that's right. We it looked did. at it with great envy and said, we want that. <laughs> And and luckily you were able to say sure you know um, and you and we found that the success was such in our library that there was no question that we would get an audience every single year and from that series um, we've been we've been kind of developing and growing it from there um, along the way so that we're bringing in other programming that complements that or. Like the comic artist form, we said, hey, it, summer's great, but maybe we need to do this year-round in some other way. So yeah. so we figured out, you know, that there are some things 
that are working for us. And I think, you know, the thing for librarians is that, um, and I hope most librarians are in, in systems that are saying, hey, let's try this. You know, let's, okay, this didn't work. It was a, there was a blizzard today, you know, and nobody could get here. Um, uh, yeah. The sun was out. It was perfect weather. Nobody came. You know, we deal with that all the time. Yes. And um, as long as we feel that the, the programming is, quality, we're going to try it again. Maybe we'll change it, you know, ask the cartoonist to change it up a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, to fit one of our other little themes. Um, but again, I totally agree with you that you, you kind of don't want to say one program, four people come, that's it. Yeah. Um, I, I, it doesn't, you know, that doesn't work, but you know if that doesn't work with anything. Like you don't no. try once, and it, it like it's like I think of a line from uh, there's a cartoon series called Home Movies, and there's this character named Coach McGurk who's like the 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 uh, the, the person you are absolutely not supposed to be. Okay, mm -hmm. and he says to this kid, he says to a young boy, if you're not immediately good at something, then it's not worth doing. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> it's like that's the mindset of like oh it wasn't a success first time out. I guess no, don't need to do it then. Uh, but anyway, I want to back up real quick. I, sure. want, I, want, I want to put a period on the end of the sentence in terms of – so we talked about getting to know your librarians by going in and talking with them and investigating the idea of some, some kind of programming. And, and really, it's, depending on the library, I find it's really helpful to start with low-risk activities, low-risk for the librarian, low-risk for the audience because yep. they don't know exactly – even if, just as I said, like the, the infrastructure of a library is invisible to the public, so too is the process of making comics to a librarian. Mm -hmm. if they, unless they mm -hmm. are like a huge enthusiast and go and watch YouTube videos on, on the process, right? Right. So if you say, oh, I'm going to do a thing on penciling. Uh, what, what's penciling? You know, right. what do you mean by that? It's something with a pencil, I guess. But, you know, you should come. I always say to other cartoonists, go in with a plan. Go in with something developed. Uh, a, a paragraph statement of – a paragraph summary that could also serve as a possible uh, uh, workshop description. Like a, a, something that the librarian can copy and paste on the library website or just with a few modifications with a procedure list. Here are the things we're going to do in this workshop. This is for the librarian's eyes only. This is not going to be public, but this is giving them a sense of what's going to happen in this hour. Kind totally, of totally. In fact, I know many times, I mean, I usually pass the write-ups, you know, if you provide it great or I pass you my written version, my first draft, and then you, you fix it up nicely. Yeah. Um, Totally. I think coming in with that plan, um, don't assume that librarians maybe, you know, that even say they are super comics enthusiasts, have an understanding of what you're trying to come in and do in a workshop. Right. Because you're right. We don't know. I've learned, I continue to learn so much about how comics are created. Mm -hmm. And um, that's by being in those programs. But but yeah, it, in the first step, you've got to come in and give an idea or paint a picture visually <laughs> of uh, for that person of what's gonna what's gonna happen mm -hmm. in that program, and then they go. Then you know they're gonna pick up on your enthusiasm. Um, they're gonna see that you know you're well organized. And as all of us, I mean, if we don't if we don't have to carry the whole burden of you know, figuring it all out ourselves, then we're willing to say, come on in, expert. Yep. Let's, let's have you show your stuff. Um, we can, you know, we think we can get the audience for you. Right. Yeah. See, th th that's where, again, it's a partnership. It's a two-way street. You're partnering mm -hmm. with the library. You're not just going and doing something and then leaving. It's not, right. it's not, it's not a, yeah. Um, where was I going next with this? Uh, oh, okay. So there was a couple other things I wanted to, to answer, anticipate some questions from mm -hmm. the audience in terms of, um, what is necessary to get their book into the library? Perfect bound. Perfect bound. You know, uh, hard spy, hard spine. Oh, for us, no. That's really, not, not. Um, we've put in books that are. I guess I would say we've laminated the covers. Of, oh, of, you did uh, take some of my floppies, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, we did. When and, and we still do. Um, so one way, hook or crook, and some of the depending on if we can get them through vendors, we might be able to get. Um, some with laminated covers here and there too. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, generally speaking, I don't think that's going to stop us from taking in your book into the collection. Okay. Um, some libraries have um, other kinds of really soft paper collections that, you know, I, I don't, 
I would hope that wouldn't stop it. And again, it, you're going to have to kind of feel out by walking into your library, taking a look at the collection. It'll inform you very quickly what you're going to be able to um, suggest or, or offer. But yeah, I, I would hope that most libraries would be receptive to any kind of format. Okay. Like well, what about ISBNs? ISBNs? I don't know. You know, you're asking me who... Oh, I don't, you're not the selector, right? I'm not so. the selector. I don't know that that... I mean, it's always nice because um, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just a, a tag. But I don't know that an international standard book number is critical um, to a book. It probably in a librarian's way, makes it legitimate. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, that that, um, that is part of yeah. the perception that we have to yeah. establish here, right? And, you know? and, and more, you know, maybe not so much for us, I'm speaking Ann Arbor District Library, but I think, yeah, probably a lot of libraries would take you more seriously if you have, you know, taken the time to get that. I was at, I was at Kinko's a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was picking up uh, the interior pages to my Boulder and Fleet mini comic. Did I give you a copy of that? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. did. Okay. And um, the one of the, the people in the store says to me, he's like, when are you going to get this published? And I said, this is publishing what I just did here. You know, I'm going to take these home. I'm going to staple the book together. Published. It's like, no, I mean, I mean, really published, you know, a publisher. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so there's still that perception and we have to uh, live with it. Yeah. <laughs> is that some people are going to say if they don't see, you know, Random House or an ISBN number, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of the overall picture that you have to paint there is that, I know that I have a level of expertise that I can that I think I'm good at sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, but to somebody who's never heard my name because I wasn't listed, I, there's no Kirkus book review of my stuff. Uh, I was never a New York Times bestselling author. I was never, you know, interviewed by uh, Nancy Pearl. <laughs> 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 you Gosh. Know? So, so I don't have that credibility yet. Mm -hmm. So I have to, you know. Uh, establish that credibility through talking through a re through building a relationship and through um, you know whatever little things I could do to sort of like make it seem more credible right mm -hmm. uh, good production values ISBN pop probably help but like as you said I guess not every library is uh, would necessarily see that as a deal killer if you have probably something to offer. probably not um, again it's it's probably it's probably yeah suggested that you go ahead and do that but um, you know, the thing, and I guess that's the thing about the programming end of things for me as a librarian, because I came in relatively ignorant. Um, I mean, you were afraid and I was ignorant. Um, so it, we, we got made, a title for the show. We, we made a great team. And um, it's one of those things that I, you know, I've learned so much that I, I hate to say it, sometimes I don't really want to look for the mainstream uh, comics anymore. I'm kind of wanting to find those independents out there. But it, it took me a while to learn that. So um, I think the programming helped inform me as a librarian um, because I stayed in there and listened. Oh, um, that's another thing. Yeah. yeah, not every librarian does that. And that's where hats off have to come off to you. Is that <laughs> I did a workshop this last summer where the <laughs> librarian said, you got everything you need here because I'm going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, okay, <laughs> you're going to leave me in a room full of kids and you don't know me, you yeah, know? Uh, yeah. Wow. That so, is a stunner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine, I mean, A, y you know, I think it was a probably a free program for them. Is that correct? Uh, I, it might or it might not have been. Okay. Uh, I mean, because I know you've done some programming where, you know, you're promoting Kids Read Comic Convention stuff. Um, I cannot imagine that anybody with a sense of responsibility as a librarian would um, just leave a, any presenter on their own to flounder their way through a program um, in a place that is not their natural place, their natural community. Um, not to mention the fact that, you know, to support that presenter, make that um, program the best it can possibly be from the presenter standpoint and the participant standpoint, um, is the fact that that 
that person didn't get informed about what you have to offer and that, gosh, golly, you might be worth bringing back um, Mm -hmm. in the future. Um, There was a lot of information lost there um, that that person, I guess, didn't think was critical uh, and is a loss to that library, unfortunately. Case case in point, and now I am going to name names because I'm going to say somebody who did something right, is that I went to Brighton uh, a few Mm -hmm. months ago to do a one-off workshop for them. The librarian participated in the workshop. I mean, actually participated. And and, More uh, than me, probably. No, no, no. About, about the same. Okay, okay. Uh, but but anyway, <laughs> uh, so it, it went really well. Everybody had a good time. It was a big turnout. And uh, a- afterwards, she said, "Well, we'll have to have you back. This was a lot of fun." And I said, "Yeah, well, you know, we'll talk mm-hmm. about it." And sometimes that results in further discussion. Sometimes it doesn't, right? But uh, a few months later, she she emailed me and said, uh, "We want to do a series." Can you develop a series for us? We want what you got at, in, at, in Ann Arbor in the summer, but we want to do it on a monthly schedule. Can you do that for us? Why wow. did she ask for that? Because she saw the value in it because she participated. So that's another right. thing. But not, again, you know, just like cartoonists. There's all kinds of cartoonists. I'm sure you've met your share of uh, the Ann Arbor District Library equivalent of the plugged-in enthusiastic, and I'm, I'm going to work hard for this thing. And then you've met the kinds who are kind of like, eh, well, what are you going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's all kinds of people everywhere. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just no, to be fair. No, and it, it you know, that's, I, I'm really excited to hear that for you. I just hope you can clone yourself because, you know, you're probably going to get sucked into all sorts of things in the future. <laughs> uh, but just remember where you are, where you live in Ann Arbor. But, um, yeah, I think that, I mean, I, I try when I do a program to really watch – I mean, I'm watching, obviously, how's the presenter going, you know, and, you know, I don't want to put them on the spot and make them super nervous, but I'm, I'm observing the way the audience reacts to them. Um, obviously, we, we use evaluation forms to get feedback, which yeah. is very, very helpful um, in engaging, you know, did that, did that work? Or even we put on our evaluation forms, you have suggestions for future programming and, you know, Inevitably, with a lot of our comics programs, I go, more comics, you know, (laughs) more stuff. And so, you know, then you go, okay, that was a successful program. And I want to be sure and, you know, do more, you know, in whatever way. That was our cue. Oh. To talk about, (laughs) because you wrote up a list of everything that's happened here since 2005. Five, yes. Holy moly. It's on three pages. (laughs) Three pages. Yes. Of programs that you've developed over the last six years. Holy cow. And and what's interesting is that the first two pages uh, are the first, what, f- four, five years, first five years. But the final page is yeah. one year alone this last year. And we just kind of blew out the doors um, yeah. on this on this 2011 so year. So here's 2005 through summer of 2008 on this page. Right. And then 2011 <laughs> is insane. <laughs> oh, my God. It's I, insane. I mean, you, can, you guys put together this thing called the Axis Guide, which right. is a periodical that highlights all of the upcoming events. And right. And I remember, uh, well, it was last... last Summer. Yeah, it was. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Like I said, the last five years have been a blur. This year has been an even faster blur. But I remember it was around the time of Kids Read Comics 2011. Mm-hmm. The new Access Guide came out for the summer programming, and the comic section filled up an entire, like, sixth they of the They finally, thing. I mean, you know, and, and just to kind of highlight, things don't happen fast, even in Ann Arbor, even though you can kind of see the evidence of programming. Some of that in the beginning is um, our anime and, and related Japanese sushi programs. Right. You know, we what I counted were peripheral to things initially that were driven heavily by um, Aaron. And then here comes Jersey popping in a program once in a while. And then finally, um, we start to pick up steam with the four years ago, working with the Comic Book Academy. And then how many years have we done the adult version of that? Two years now, I Two. think. This okay. was our second year this yeah. year. So, so you know, then, then the summer's really picking up and comics begin to take over big time. Again, no offense to manga or anime. I think, you know, it depends on where you are. There's all sorts of options well, and possibilities. Well, we kind of we subsumed that audience, too, with the stuff that we oh, developed. Oh, they, they swung into it. Yeah. Most, most famously was Stephanie, who started as a screaming teen in the manga and anime programming that yeah. we had and was drawing all manga who 
now is out in New her, York City. New York City doing pers- indie underground uh, comics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she complete. So, so a lot of those kids, in fact, did get absorbed in to um, the programming for that we that we named comics as such. Right. Well, that was one of my personal goals was like, yeah. let's just let's try to just use the word comics to mean all these things. All as an it, umbrella. You know, yeah. It means yeah. indie comics. It means manga. It means, uh, you know, American superhero looking stuff. And it also means, you know, uh, autobiographical, right? Visual storytelling. Visual storytelling for crying yeah. out loud. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we wound up kind of taking up a lot of that audience. But yeah, look, I'm looking at the earlier programming, and this is what a lot of libraries do: is they have things like Anamanga Club. Right. Right. We have a club. Right. We watch some Inuyasha. We watch some Fruits Basket, and we, you know, maybe there'll be like a cosplay party or something like mm-hmm. that. And there's th- that's totally cool. That that serves a purpose. Right. right? That that right. creates because you. Libraries are trying to make their uh, buildings into community resource centers, right? Mm-hmm. Places where people want to congregate right. and do things together. Right. Um, but yeah, then like all of a sudden in 2007, 2008, it just starts exploding with like way a wider variety of things. Right. Um, God, I didn't realize how much I took over the joint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but that said, you know, I mean, the forum when mm-hmm. we developed that, that that was another thing that I thought was really cool that we did is that. We turned it in. We turned it over to, like I said in the first three months, over and over again. This is your forum, right? I'm an advisor. I'll right. advise and I will attend every forum, regardless if I'm doing a guest speaking thing. But this is your forum. So you guys need to organize amongst yourselves to decide who do you want to speak mm-hmm. next. And yeah, and that's how uh, we wound up getting. This. I'm, I'm so happy that this happened. Is that this past summer for the Comic Book Academy, members of the forum became teachers to do follow-up sessions between my sessions. Right. So I was doing like the um, the general storytelling theory workshops where it's like, okay, well, this week we're going to work on character design. We're going to think about these things. Here's the homework. And in between this and the next session, you can go to Chad Sell's uh, figure drawing workshop, mm-hmm. right? So right. So it, it, it also, I mean, if in, in – the best case scenario, if everything works out, you elevate the status of the local uh, experts in your community so that they can participate. And it's not just about making this the Jersey show, as much as Anne likes to make fun of me and sing that song whenever I get ready to do Comics Are Great. You're going to do the Jersey show today? Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, about, it's about promoting comics and then getting the community involved so then they can sustain it. I, I want a truck to hit me tomorrow. Or no, I don't want a truck to hit me tomorrow. If a truck were to hit me tomorrow, I want what I'd started here to keep going. Right, but, yeah? right. Totally. And I, you know, the three people that did workshops this summer um, brought such different qualities to it that I that we saw significantly new audiences too. Yeah. I mean that's the thing that's kind of cool about it is that you know we have people committed to like the series kind of thing but at the same time um, you know they might tell a friend hey you know there's this other side um, thing especially like Chad Chad was so worried about um, the his figure drawing workshop was in August or tail, it was <laughs> tail end of July and he was so afraid that people would be so wrung out from all of the comics programming that nobody would show up well that was our biggest attendance yeah. and and you know maybe it was because of figure drawing and you know we advertised it in the sense of being you know um comics related but there but i think what we're starting to find is there's also interested in the drawing sector so you know that's probably going to take us down some roads um to see if we can bring in on occasion just straight up drawing um opportunity workshops which is you know kind of aside from comics but um, but related to but it but it is revealed to us through the programming that you know and we're always looking for new um, avenues and new opportunities for people so yeah i mean it's it's just amazing how (laughs) and and it's so easy once you know like i said with the forum once we started um doing it people were coming in from here and there and i remember ryan estrada and you came over and said you've got to get this guy he yeah. just dropped he was in the united states for once one year he's, he's going to be back or he actually is in the united states again he's coming back to michigan in a couple weeks okay uh, so cool. yeah I so get him so he he came to a forum and in a spring time and and jersey walked over and said sharon you better get this guy <laughs> and not only you know we got him for the forum but then he presented at kids read comics and did an awesome job. In fact, yep. his presentation at the forum was kind of a tryout um, for that um, convention yeah. pre- presentation. So, you know, it's really fun. You, you just, I, I now am looking around, you know, who do we have here um, as possible presenters each time we have forum? 
Yeah, yeah, and well, and then and then and, and what I, I love this language that you used about things being revealed to you uh -huh. is that what just starting up a simple. Silly little thing, a two-hour event where I talked about comics and how much I love them to some, mm -hmm. some people turned into a relationship between us in developing more. You know what else we could do? You know what else? And you know yeah. what else we could do? Yeah. And so, okay, so then we did this thing where we built out this six-week uh, class that turned into two six-week classes, which got institutionalized. They happen every year now. Uh, that took a couple of years of hard yeah. work yes. and sticking with it, which turned into the Ann Arbor uh, the Comic Artist Forum, which was monthly. Now it's bi-monthly, mm -hmm. which I'm blown away by. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's demand for two sessions a month. Holy cow! Who knew? Yeah, uh, and it, and it keeps on growing. And, and then we bring we elevate the status of the local talent, the local um, experts to come in and lead their own workshops. And now we're taking it to the next level. Is starting in January and February. We're gonna start beaming in through Skype. Uh, look, or artists from beyond the Michigan area to do, to do talks for right. the forum. So the, the right. guest presenters will be Rob Stenzinger and then Audra Ferrici and Scott Yoshinaga in January and February, and we're, we're going to get more. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like e with each new thing you do, you come up with six more ideas for new things that you like to do, right? And and I, you know, I don't know what it is. It's about people who are book. We call them book pros, book processors, people who check in books and. Um, and shelve them. Um, but at Mallet's Creek, where I work, there are two people, one of whom I may, I got to nudge her again. Her father worked um, for years for Ford in their arts department, but also did inking for, I'm trying to remember the local um, company that produced comics. He Caliber? Did, yes, he okay. worked for Caliber. And I'm thinking about bringing him in because he always, he his only work was done by hand. And of course, we talk about that in forum, you know, whether some of the work that you can do can, should, could be done faster, uh, more effectively on um, Photoshop or whatever other um, computer tool. So we may be bringing him in. Um, another kid who has started with us is like, an unbelievable comics expert. I mean, he's just, um, I, I don't get to talk to him that often because we actually have to kind of do our work. Um, <laughs> but every now and then in the back room, there's, you know, some little thing. And I just, you know, picked up on these two people just by hearing them converse um, while I was sitting at my desk working. And so it's like, Oh my God! You know who is not into comics? You know it's like it's amazing. Well, and that, that's the other thing is that I I think that you know anybody who were to say and and I get this from time to time from people is oh well you're in Ann Arbor of course everything's going to work out there because that's the the city where the streets are paved with gold and everybody is just smiling all the time because everything is handed to them and nothing no bad things happen there <laughs> and and everybody supports everybody in Ann Arbor right that's the reputation we have in some other cities in our <laughs> state sometimes mm -hmm. yeah which we know is not true uh but i think that the question was asked earlier in the chat Renee Van Belton asked in the chat and i think this is a good question uh, what if you're in an area that's a little bit more rural? What if you're in an area where you're a library that doesn't have very much funding? How do you approach them? How do you go up to somebody? Because, okay, let's face it. All libraries are in trouble right, right. now. All right. of them. You guys, uh, I, I don't know. You, you can plead the fifth on this because I don't want to get you in trouble with your superiors. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, in the last 10 years, you've probably taken on three to four times the amount of responsibilities that you had. 10 years ago mm -hmm. as as budgets shrink and as more resources are spread across fewer people sure right so i walk into this beleaguered library and not not ann arbor i'm saying i'm, I'm saying metaphor uh, hypothetically i walk mm -hmm. into this beleaguered library there's a library in there who's just she's having enough uh, trouble or he's having enough trouble uh maintaining the collection and trying to uh manage you know the day-to-day -day schedule and handle the reference desk and answering the phone and answering the ask us email and all these other things that they have to do and i walk in and go hey you want to do some comics programming it only cost you five hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah just just make something happen just give me a room and a microphone and eh, we'll do something 500 bucks please mm -hmm. uh they're not gonna want to talk to you very much because they got enough to deal with about dealing with this jerk, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I, I would think that in that situation, again, going back to this idea of starting with something low risk, low cost. Right. You know, um, okay, maybe what I had in mind would have cost $500. What can I do for 100 
right? Mm-hmm. Just keep right. it low. Okay, well, for 100, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And let's let's schedule on this date. This is why I think it's important to come in with a plan and really be explicit about what you want to do because <laughs> I, I know enough librarians now to know how – overworked you guys are like like people in a lot of industries like cartoonists mm-hmm. for crying out loud uh, we were just talking before the show about how i'm prematurely aging because of um my career you were remarking on how some of the videos of me in 2008 on the library website that mm-hmm. i look a lot different that makes me sad <laughs> <laughs> but it's inevitable it's okay Drew. it really is <laughs> Take it from someone who knows. <laughs> I'm going to go on that raw foods diet so I can just stay this age forever. Um, but anyway, you know, it's like everybody's overworked anyway. So so what can you do to you, – you got to sweeten the pill here. You, if you want them to react to it, make it as easy for them to understand what you want to do as possible and make it as low risk to start out with as possible. Don't even go into your five-year vision of what this thing can turn into oh, at no. the start. Yeah, yeah because the, the librarian is not – they're just going to look at like, where did – what planet did you just land from? Yeah, I don't um, even know if this library is going to be here in five years. So this is the way some right, of them are thinking right, right now. So, right, so. so if you can bring to them – something at as low a cost as you you feel you can you can afford and I do think you should come in with a cost instead of just giving your program away sure that that's me um, speaking no then, no spec work kids <laughs> yeah yes. yeah that that then you know you you see yourself you know you present yourself as someone of value that you know you want um, them to give you a shot and you um, you could actually lift their day, you know, I mean, because they truly, I, I actually live in a community of a much smaller library. It's a single library, Celine, and their programming is, is obviously not as extensive and, and um, cannot be due to their staffing. So, you know, you could bring in an idea that just might brighten their whole summer of program planning ahead. You know, I mean, it just, it can, it can make such a difference um, to come in with that positive attitude and maybe not over enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> you mean you don't want to come in like crush the cloud and just scream in their face? <laughs> Somewhere, Sam somewhere in between, you know, a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> oh no, you don't want to do that. But you do yeah. want to demonstrate that that you have a competency for this, and right. that you have a competency that can be easily demonstrated by looking at a piece of paper, saying that, "Oh, this is planned out. Mm-hmm. This is something mm-hmm. I can copy and paste and put on the library website today if I really needed to." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, here's an, a list of available dates. Yeah, do that. Awesome. So, yes, please. Yeah. Here's the times I can do this thing, mm-hmm. uh, and then here's a cost, and here are the materials I'll need from you. Yep. Don't hesitate to do that. Oh, it's like, absolutely. I'll need a projector. I'll need a, a laptop. I'll bring my presentation on a thumb drive. Or it, then they can always come back to you and say, sorry, we don't have a laptop. Okay, we'll work out something else, mm-hmm. right? You, you mm-hmm. keep the negotiations and discussion going. Oh, absolutely. But, absolutely. but if you, the more you can let them know up front, and this is where visualizing a workshop really helps. And as a matter of fact, in some cases, mm-hmm. I found I've had great success in doing a visual presentation for a librarian. I'll give them a slideshow. This is what the things will look like. Here's pictures of me with the kids. These days, I'm, I'm fortunate because I have lots of video. Right. There's lots of video of me in classrooms that I can, when I approach reference, a library. Reference, yeah, yeah, reference for them. Hey, check this out. Mm-hmm. Yep, here's five minutes of me talking to kids so you can see that I've done it and I know what I'm doing and get a sense mm-hmm. of it. That helps. Sure. But failing that, do a slideshow, uh, five, uh, you know, a five-minute, two-minute slideshow of here's what the thing's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the difference on some librarians' faces when I do that. They're like, oh, yeah, let's do that, you know. Mm-hmm. But before, mm-hmm. they're like, mm, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. again, bringing up a, uh, a sense of partnership rather than applying for a position kind of right, thing. Right, right. Because right? you guys Absolutely. got enough to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you can come in with that plan um, and we can, you know, see what that means to our patrons, it's like, whoa, you know, this this looks like something that, you know, this is easy. Um, and, and it's something that has potential to grow. So... Somebody's asking in the chat an interesting question. What kind of a resume would make a library comfortable with this if, say, this is the first try? If you've never done it before? Ooh, it's a toughie. I don't know. I was just um, – I just was reading an article in a professional journal, and one of our former graduate students, which is called a public library associate, presented her resume entirely as a graphic. Um, so – and I'm like, wow. You know <laughs> – I'm just thinking cartoonists or, you know, 
present it. You could do it in a creative way, um, but make it fun and, you know, I don't know. I, that's just me flipping off the top of my head. But Well, I would, I would assume, and, and again, this is a gross generalization um, because if anything, my last five years has taught me is that librarians are all very, very different people. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's both, it both is a uh, response to environment, the kind of library they work in, but also just because they're human beings and human beings are very different people. Sure. You know, you're not all the Nancy Pearl sh action figure. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If any, I'm if, starting to look like her, but you know. I, <laughs> no, I know. if anything, I would say that the programs that we do are usually pretty can get pretty rowdy at times. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I would think that most of them, like like most people I meet who are not cartoonists, when they find out I'm a cartoonist, they go, "Oh, that sounds like fun." You know, there's always this kind of. <laughs> it's a little bit condescending, mm -hmm. but it's always this sense of they expect me to be buoyant and funny. As, as a result of my career, right? So I would think that you would you could get away with doing a presentation or submitting a, um, not a resume, but like some kind of proposal in comics form. Mm -hmm. If you don't have slides of you teaching the kids, draw it. Show them what right. it will look like. Do an actual comic presentation uh, that you can turn into them. Say, this is the kind of thing I could do for you. This is what it's called. That's another one. Mm -hmm. Name it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just yeah. say like a uh, character design workshop because mm, but that, that tells you what it is, but it's not exactly audience grabbing. Right. 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 So um, I'm trying to think of some of the things that we we did, to, uh, you know, uh, comic book academy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the well, sheet the right here. Well, the comic book academy was was kind of a, yeah, kind of a natural. OK. But. Yeah. Here's here's Chad Sell's uh, workshop, which was realistic figure drawing for comics artists. But mm -hmm. the title was Get Real. Yeah. yeah. Get real. Yeah. Realistic figure drawing for comics artists. Uh, and not, and not to say that you have to do like the whole uh, Adam West Batman thing with every, with every title. Right. But, but you know, have a uh, something a little bit catchy. Like a, a popular workshop I lead is uh, Robots versus Monsters. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a catchy title. Oh, I get to draw robots. And granted, this is aimed at kids, right? I get to draw monsters. I get to draw robots. Fun. What the class really is is a character design exercise. It's like, let's draw some square shapes, let's draw some wiggly shapes. Which is the robot? Oh, the square shape. Why? The investigation mm -hmm. of how shape informs character. Right. Now let's design some characters based on these principles, and we'll draw some monsters and robots fighting. Right. So it's a real learning event, but it's got this fun title that suggests that we're going to just draw some monsters and robots, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway. Um, yeah, I just I was just going to say... Um, I don't, you know, I was, I'm always charmed when I see on an evaluation some, some participant of the comics, whatever workshop it is, that they'll draw something. And I'll always try to make sure that our people upstairs go, look, 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 you know. <laughs> um, so, so in terms of a resume, in terms of a proposal, yeah, I mean, you could probably charm. <laughs> Charm most librarians into going. Whoa, that looks really neat. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that that would be a cool thing to drop off like a flyer like that. Say yeah. like, well, okay. Uh, if the teen librarian's not in, could you please put this in her inbox? It's four page mini comic I did. That's a presentation mm -hmm. on what I would like to do for them. Here's yeah. my contact information on the back. Mm -hmm. That might be a cute idea. Yeah. So you have some some flexibility there, even though sure. you exist in a system where there's a procedure to do certain things. Uh, approaching them is not one of those procedures, right? Mm -hmm. Just approaching the right person, so. Right, right. Um, any other final thoughts on this whole programming business? You deserve, like, a trophy <laughs> for everything you did this I year. I just say yes. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, ideas come up and, and it's just, um, yeah, I mean, I'm even I'm kind of, like, amazed at what I see there. It's just. Um, crazy. And, and I guess it's just, you know, I feel like I'm getting as much reward out of um, doing the programs as, um, you know, as the pe I hope the people who are coming to the programs. I, we just see a good steady attendance continue. And, you know, we're very, very excited to, you know, keep it growing. And I can't imagine, but, you know, in about how many months we'll be looking at um, – Kidry Comic Conference spun, spun through our library system. Yeah, yeah. And that's sort of, you know. It's I don't, already been announced, uh, July 7th, 7th and 8th, 8th. yes, yeah. 2012. Right. And it's, you know, even I can't envision what that's actually going to be like. And, and it to me, I I say it's not the ultimate yet um, because, <laughs> yeah. because you don't ever want to, you don't ever want to stop 
trying new things. And, and I think for librarians, that's the big message is that, you know, keep your minds open to the possibilities. Try things more than once if, if it doesn't work. We all know there's weird circumstances why you might not get an audience and promote, promote, promote. Well, you mentioned earlier this, this really important thing like, oh, it was sunny today. That's why nobody showed up. Or, oh, it's a nice day today. That's why everybody came out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You can, you can justify that up the wazoo. Yeah. But, but one of the things that I do, and, you know, again, as a cartoonist, you know, you can kind of like gently probe this area initially before you really know your library person that you're working with. But I, I've developed um, a contact list of all the participants. I offer this that at every one. at every um, event, pretty much. You know, would you like you know, would you like to hear about more comics events? I also because I work out. You know, I go out to schools bringing our, our Access team brochure out um, around to the schools. Um, I've found out there are comics teachers or um, club sponsors, and I try to add them to my email list. And when I go back today after this program, I'm going to send out a list to the list um, what's going on next week, which we have three events um, coming we'll up. We'll talk about in a second. Yeah. And so, you know, I try to make sure to get that word out, and not everybody will get back to me. Um, a lot of people are on that list. And for example, one is, I don't know if you remember Alan from the first year of the Comics Fundamentals, but he's um, he's now a new father. And so I think his life has kind of turned and he hasn't come to Comics Forum, but, but he'll come up and talk to me and um, I know the interest is still there, and maybe when the time is right, he's going to pop back in. I mean, nobody yeah. has screamed back at me, take me off this list. You know, they appreciate hearing about yeah. that. And if, if email doesn't work, um, I have a few people that I go ahead and still phone um, with and leave a message that, hey, we've got stuff coming on. So, you know, again, as part of getting these programs off the ground, I think it's important to, you know, find out, you know, are there, what are the different ways that um, you're going to get the word out? And can I, as a cartoonist, help? I know you have offered, and we've had little, like, little quarter sheet flyers and different things um, for, for things throughout time. And I think you've learned, you know, that for example, here we we try to really PR stuff heavily through our website, mm -hmm. um, but and if we get our comics page up, it'll be even better. It's um, coming. But, yeah, yeah, that the people will have a destination on our website to go to and get all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but but in the meantime, you know, we're trying to get the word out in as you know many different ways to you know and build that audience um, and keep you know and, and even if we don't see everybody there's always someone new that shows up that's yeah. what's amazing and people new who have driven as far as you know 30 40 minutes away oh, to be a part of the thing yep easily. And that, that's a sign of the demand and that and that's another like uh you know uh, arrow in the quiver uh, uh to defend against the idea that ann arbor is somehow special because mm -hmm. if people are driving from South Lyon, if they're driving from Grass Lake to right. come to Ann Arbor to this thing, that means the demand exists elsewhere. Right. So Exactly. So, yeah. Actually, here's here's a neat thing that people are talking about in the chat I want to touch on real quick is they're saying that uh, all of these same things that we're talking about would apply to approaching a comic shop or a bookstore or an art supply store as well. And I agree. I think mm -hmm. any of these things that we discussed today, you could engage in the same relationship in any of those other venues. Um, the only difference is that – at a library, you have free admission, and mm -hmm. that's an important factor to get people in the door. And, and now, and now that might, think, might lead some people to think that, oh, well, that just means that a bunch of people just show up and go, hey, where's the free stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing free? I'm out of here, right? Yeah. I think we've had, maybe, no, mm -hmm. we've had maybe like out of the hundreds and hundreds of people who have come through the different programs that you've done, uh, I think I can think of one person who showed up and said, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. Um, most of the time, it's just, it just it means that uh, it, it changes the way people prioritize the things. Right. So it's like, am I going to go to soccer practice or am I going to go to the comics thing? Oh, I got to pay 50 bucks to do the comics thing? I'm going to go to soccer, soccer practice, right? Oh, well, now I'll do the comics thing. Oh, I'm so glad I came because I was going to go to soccer practice instead of doing this. I, I mean, I'm using soccer practice as an example because that was actually something a student said to me. <laughs> uh, well, and I, I guess I better put one other thought out there. Um, one of the things that our library tries not to do as much as possible, sounds weird, is to register 
people because sometimes word might come to a person last minute, but if they have to register, oh, I guess I won't try, you know. Yeah. And so, for example, the first couple summers, because we weren't sure how the Comic Book Academy would roll, we we did require registration in advance, and and yet we were pretty open to letting people come in. But, you know, for people who read a, a listing of a program on a website and go, oh, I have to register, I have to jump a hurdle, um, then it becomes kind of a, uh, okay, one more thing. And, yeah. and so this summer, for example, we did not register for Comic Book Academy nor for Comics Fundamentals. And um, it didn't make a bit of difference as no. far as our attendance was concerned. Well, I think the summer game helped a little bit. Sure, perhaps, sure. Uh, because I noticed that we had almost 100% retention in yeah. students for the uh, adult class, which yeah. the year before we did not. Right. Um, so there's always a little bit of attrition in, mm -hmm. these, in these workshops. There, a little there, long there form, can long be. Yeah. And, and, you know, it is it is a commitment, especially yeah. if you're a younger kid. and um, Especially when you live in a town with so many summer activities as you have in the right. Right. area too. Right. You know, that's another thing we're competing against, whereas in a rural community, you might not be. Yeah, you might be the only show in town. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I just kind of want to put that little word in about, you know, the idea of registration. And I know there are some libraries that absolutely insist on that. But, yeah. um, you know, if you, if you can say, geez, you know, if you can provide pencil and paper and erasers or something, you know, I can come in and do, you know, a program. I mean, most libraries can provide that much, you know, uh, you know, the projector and the laptop and things like that are another level. Um, but, you know, in terms of expense, um, it's not heavy on, you know, high dollar items um, to, to do comics programming. And we, we do make it a point, no matter what it is, we pretty much have paper, pencil rulers, yep. erasers out for every program. In case any presenter is kind of going, you know, I, I can't imagine that anybody, I, I usually say, just let it, and you know that people may be drawing, their heads may be down, but I can assure you they're listening because yeah. when it comes to question and answer time, those people who have had their heads down are going to raise their hands and come up with a question. So, you know, we, we kind of, as a standard, have that out there because um, a lot of our participants are people who, you know, aren't necessarily the comics you know, exclusively a comics writer. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually an artist blended with the storytelling. So. Yeah, they do the yeah. both. Um, some folks are in the chat are saying, like, wow, they're, they're really astonished by the fact that uh, a lack of um, registration didn't affect turnout. And then somebody somebody else is saying that I, I think AADL has established a trust with, trust with its audience. Um, I would think that... I don't know. I don't know. It's it's tough to say because yeah, we lifted registration on the workshops a couple of years after we were doing them. Right. Well, this year, what was funny was <clears throat> we have the standard of not doing as much as possible. We want pe the public to know: just come. These are free programs. All the materials and resources are provided. Um, there are times when we've had programs where we think, for example, one of the programs we still have to do registration or kind of, although this weekend we'll see, uh -huh. um, <laughs> is, the, is the small little lab of 14 Macs that we have um, when we do Photoshop. And so we, we have to continue to do registration so people don't get frustrated. Now, this weekend, we're actually going to leave it as a free-flowing three-hour open lab, and we'll see how that goes. I've got the next door friend's uh, free space, AADL free space room. That's but, so awesome that you have that attitude, that you're but, not stressed out about it. That's so great. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to see how it goes because, yeah. um, you know, and we're kind of promoting it in the way that, hey, you know, if you don't get in right away, you know, you know, go down the street, have a latte or something, and, and come just back. come back. It's a three-hour session. Right, yeah. right. Um, and parking's free downtown. That's another big seller on Sundays. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that's the thing. We kind of were forced out of registering because there were a few other new programming. I don't know that you know this, but that they felt they needed to have registration for. And so they oh. said, oh, we're just going to take that out from under you. And I kind of first went, oh, and then I went, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay. And and we were. We yeah, were, you know. So we were. so and I think we would have been that way from the get go, but maybe we didn't know that for sure. Uh, you know, I think I think it's it's kind of a chicken and egg thing too in the sense yeah. that it takes 
it, it takes that dedication on the part of the librarian and the cartoonist to commit to it, to mm -hmm. say, okay, let's do a series of one-off things on a monthly basis or maybe even three times a year. Mm -hmm. And we'll just gauge participation. And like you, you had the presence of mind and the foresight to collect the names of the people who attend so you can email them to remind them about these things, mm -hmm. right? So that helps too if you have a librarian sure. who's a, being an active participant in the promotion of the thing. Uh, so, so it's a combination of that. It's a combination of getting a sense of trust from the audience after a few initial things. Um, so that, that Brighton thing that I did, I just did the first session of the three-part series I'm doing for them. Uh, and there was maybe a third of the room was, was from my first class. Okay. So, but then the rest were new people. Mm -hmm. So these kids who took the first, uh, who, who, this was their second time taking a class with me. Uh, I heard explicitly from them, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I came once. They, they heard about another thing with me. They came again because they had such a good time the first time. They had a good time again. We'll see you next time. And mm -hmm. that's how you build it. And, and I think that uh, even if you do have registration, uh, if you have a poor turnout, you have to do it again at least a couple more times in order right. to really f figure out if the demand is there. And I think, if anything, our area has shown is I think that the demand is probably everywhere. I mean, yeah. the manga thing was huge a few years ago. Yeah. There's a lot of kids who mm -hmm. are really interested in this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. anyway, um, okay, so I'll give you a chance for final thoughts on this. Any kind of closing idea uh, I, in case I we just missed think, anything? I just... I just say go for it. I, I think, you know, we've outlined the idea of, of coming in with a plan, um, a positive attitude. Um, be aware you might not get your first, you know, person. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, be, be open to um, putting your foot out there because chances are um, there's a librarian or there's a library staff person who's going to go, wow look at this, you know, this is something that um, is just about laid out here for us and all we have to do is book it, you know. Yeah. So I, you know, I, y y it's like anything else. I think as cartoonists, you guys know that you're going to get rejected from time to time yeah. if you throw your stuff out there. Yeah. So, so it's no different, you know, in libraries, but, you know, coming back around and, you know, hey, no big deal, you know, keep, keep in touch with people, you know, let them know if you're getting other opportunities to do things, you know. It, mm -hmm. it it could happen, you know, right in your hometown, um, even if it doesn't right away, um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, it, well, yeah, it was it was a small and humble start, like you said earlier. You know, uh, I was afraid, and you were ignorant. I <laughs> had no idea that you were afraid. I was like, oh my gosh, I had no uh, idea. I was, oh, I was so I was so scared. I mean, when, when I started podcasting uh, back in two thousand seven, I could not get behind the mic without a, a belt of whiskey. Ah. I, I really, I honestly couldn't. <laughs> I had to have it. Otherwise, Woo. I could not sit down behind that mic because the, 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 even the look of it was so frightening to me. So oh. public speaking is hard. You know? Oh, it is hard. Yeah. But, right. um, yep, totally. Question in the chat that I want to address really quick before sure. we move on to the calendar and uh, some book reviews. Sure. Oh, did we lose the stream? Anyway. Um, oh, no, we didn't. Okay. So uh, the saying how do you deal with teaching the first lessons again to new students that missed the first session? Um, there's a couple of ways you could do this if you've never done this before. Because like in, in my case, I'm lucky. In Ann Arbor District Library, videotapes one of my mm -hmm. versions of the class. So if people miss something, I could say, oh, you missed week two? Go to the library's website. The video's there. You can see what we did last year. And it's essentially the same, even mm -hmm. though I modify it now every year. Yeah. Um, another thing you could do is if you've got a multi-part workshop that you want to propose, record the content as, a, as an audio file or video file that you can give to the library or give access, put it on YouTube and give the library access to that, say here's where the files are. So if anybody misses something, now they can get es essentially what they missed or put it in a handout. That was another thing that I did is I would put the mm -hmm. homework assignment with a, with a one page paragraph description of here's essentially what we covered in week two. And I give right. it to them during week two as a review piece uh, but then also it serves as a way for the people who missed the week before to catch up. There's a lot of ways you can handle that, even if, even if it's your first time doing it. It's just uh, belt and suspenders that either have some backup video that you can give to somebody or a handout, and that'll bring people up to speed usually. Um, so yeah, and then, and then I mean, th I also do a podcast called Fabulous Secrets. Uh, it's on my website, comicsagreat.com. Uh, you can go to the podcast archives. That's a show that I'm doing where I'm actually sharing uh, if, lesson plans and also just observations from my classroom experiences so in order to help people do what I do so mm -hmm. you can always check that out too um, that 
cowsgreat.com. Anyway, so okay, that was awesome, Sharon, and I think we okay. I think we went long. So, but I, I'm not going to try to rush us out of here because uh, you know this was a rare opportunity where I knew you didn't have any place to be necessarily. I no, <laughs> no, it's a rare day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about the calendar. What do we got coming up at? AADL.org. Of course, do I have the calendar in front of me? I know that this Sunday we have, um, so I'm just not I'll, coming up with the dates off the I'll, top. I'll pull it up. Uh, I, the 16th of 16th October. 16th of October, we have a, a Comic Artist Forum follow up, a three hour session in our computer lab upstairs, um, third floor. And it's a chance for people who are working to try and finish um, their artwork, clean it up um, with Jersey um, to be able to. Um, Support them and Anne. Anne's going to oh, be right. also a backup uh, support for Photoshop. And so it's a chance for you to bring in your artwork. We'll have a scanner. Um, if you don't have the capability of scanning it uh, before coming in, we also will have, um, yeah. I So it's just a chance for, for people who just don't have access to Photoshop on a regular basis to come in and do some work, learn. Um, get for more immersed. For free. For free. It that is, is so it is a, awesome. Well, and we we really want to try and open the lab up more and more because we just, you know, feel like that's an underutilized resource in our library. But, um, you know, we have the focus, obviously, this time of comics. Um, <laughs> so that's the 16th on Tuesday. The, um, how many days later is that? <laughs> the 18th? Uh, yes, the 18th. Is um, our teens make comics panel and um, that's actually going to be part of the the comics are great podcast that's right um, so series. 7 p.m on the 18th of october at mallet's creek yes we're going to have a panel of kids under the age of 18 who have mm -hmm. all made comics in this area and a lot of them through the programming we've done here at ADL. Right. so that's kind of cool it's kind of like a graduating class kind yeah, of yeah yeah but, uh, yeah, we've done this before. We did mm -hmm. this back in March at the right. Kids Read Comics Extravaganza at the Ann Arbor Art Center. We, you and I conducted a panel mm -hmm. with some of the brighter uh, stars of our area who are, uh, I don't think any of them were over the age of 15 at that time. Right, right. Pretty young. Uh, but, yeah, so a panel discussion, talk with kids about what, what their approach is, what's their mm -hmm. creative process, and how is it that they have the uh, gumption and stick to to put together a published book at that time young age. Right, right. right. And then um, come Saturday, we have um, a program, two, two programs, actually, back to back. At noon, we have David Peterson, um, who is of Mouse Legend fame, and he's uh, going... Mouse Guard, yeah. Oh, Mouse... Yeah, I have Legends of Mouse Guard in my head. <laughs> um, sorry about that, David. I'm really sorry. Um, yes, I've read all three. I own all three. Um, <laughs> So anyway, he's going to come and and <laughs> basically it'll be a, an author presentation. But yep. I'm really pumped up about him coming. And then following directly on that, we'll have um, Curtis from Vault of Midnight, our local comic store, um, in with one of our local um, teacher poet. Um, uh, he's just an awesome guy, Jeff Cass, who will do a program together. Um, based on a book that Jeff Cass has done about um, all sorts of adventures boys can get into while growing up. And um, so they're going to kind of work together. I think Curtis is going to be doing a little creative drawing and so forth. So I, cool. I, I don't know all the details on that. One of, our, one of my colleagues is going to do that program, and I'm going to probably hang around and see what happens. But um, that's all coming up this coming week, and it kind of fits in with our teen uh, Read Week, which is a national program through American Library Association, um, and the theme this year is Picture It. Um, but we never restrict at Ann Arbor District Library. Anybody can come. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be teens. Adults and kids are welcome to these programs as well. Cool. And then there's one more. This one is not at the Ann Arbor District Library. This is at the, uh, well, it's at 913 South University Avenue. I'm trying to figure out. It's, it's at the University of Michigan. Oh, Hatcher Graduate Library. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Thursday, October 13th, 530 to 7 p.m. Uh, Jim Ottaviani. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way you pronounce yep. his name. I yep. always mess it up. I always mess it up. Uh, Jim Ottaviani uh, is going to be talking about his new book, yeah. Feynman. Feynman, which I finally got my hands on and just finished reading. Um, awesome book. Um, really fascinating about a fascinating guy who had, um, I was telling Jersey before we started the podcast today that um, there was a thing he worked on 
called QED, quantum electrodynamics. I'm not, I probably do not have that right. Anyway, he worked on it for years and found out eventually that two other people in the world were working on this. But um, for Richard Feynman, the way that he wrapped his head around trying to understand the whole principle of what was going on, he drew um, his equations, so to speak. They were visual. Yeah. And that in the end, when he met up with the guy from, I believe it was England, and had who had beautiful mathematical formulas on the board, um, but Feynman couldn't understand them. <laughs> they got together, <laughs> talked, and by the time it was all said and done, the visuals of Feynman's actually were the more efficient uh, means of explaining the whole thing. And I thought, wow, isn't that fascinating? Isn't that a little bit like what we've just been talking about mm -hmm. for, you know, well, and this mm -hmm. goes back to something Ernie Cologne said on NPR is that comics don't, uh, don't simplify, they clarify. Right. And, and properly used images can clarify. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. And that's awesome mm -hmm. that uh, Jim picked up on that to, to include that in the book. He's right. going to be on next week, as a matter of fact. Yeah, We're going to yeah. talk with uh, Jim uh, Adaviani and uh, Nick Abadzis of uh, Leica. So that, cool. uh, I'm really excited about that discussion. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Uh, so that was your Feynman review. What else did you well, talk I, about? Well, I won't do all of them because there's probably not enough time since we're yeah. over. But I have to, David, Dave Roman, bring out your book because you got it to me quickly. This is a advanced reader's copy of his team boat. And... Uh, I don't know what I thought this book was going to be. I, I team boat. I was thinking dream boat, but but the subtitle is the angst of being a teen, the thrill of being a boat, <laughs> um, and I like okay, that isn't a dream boat. So <laughs> at any rate, um, literally, this is a story about a kid whose name is Teen Boat, first name Teen, last name Boat, and um, he has the capability to transform himself into a boat, actually a small yacht. Um, and the adventures of being going through this kind of split existence of, um, you know, it's just I, I, one of my favorite episodes is the is the class trip through the yacht club of his high school to Venice, where he falls in love with a gondola. Um, wow. <laughs> and I won't explain any more um, at this point, but it looks like it's going to be a fantastic um, series coming up because this is just the first of many, I am sure. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we should point people at – I'm trying to find where to pre-order it. You can pre-order it on Amazon. Um, let's see. It's coming out from Clarion Books, May of yes. 2012. And I'm trying to find on his site um, – HoughtonMifflinBooks.com slash Clarion will take you to the Clarion website. Uh, but we will have a link in the show notes to where people can pre-order this book because it is up for pre-order, uh, I believe. And mm -hmm. uh, you can also, you know, uh, put it on your to-read list on Goodreads. That would be a nice thing to do for Dave, a uh, friend of the show. And, uh, yeah, also a great author. Fun. So, fun. Yeah, yeah, it cool. was fun and funny. <laughs> so, th yeah, I'm glad that you got that copy. So. Yeah, yeah. So any other uh, uh, plugs you wanted to make? Any other things that you oh, wanted to make a noise about? you know, about? I always have more, but, um, and I think you know this one, City of Spies. I'm going to kind of put these two together. The Anne Frank book is from, uh, is literally the biography of Anne Frank by Sid Jacobson and Ernie um, Cologne. Ernie Cologne. And it's just an awesome book of uh, nonfiction. I mean, I just am so impressed with the nonfiction um comics that are coming out these days. And and I, I told Jersey a long time ago, but, you know, his discussion about line value yeah. and, and how it is that in the book of Anne Frank, it's just literally um, presented to you without any judgment, any swirl, any excitement that contrasts to the very thrilling story of City of Spies, yeah. which is wonderful um, about some kids who during World War II discover that there are some spies um, right in their own backyard and literally how the girl who imagines herself um, as a, well, she is a cartoonist. Jersey always emphasizes that that is, in fact, the case. Um, <laughs> how, how the depiction of her 
you know, talking about her episode um, is more comics based. Um, and it looks more like like 1950s kind yeah, of pop arty comics. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, contrast with the rest of it. But again, you know, the, the line value is a little bit more dramatic. Yep. And that's what makes it fun in comparison to the very amazing um, nonfiction book of the Anne Frank biography. So, Wow. So, yeah. That's a good range of books that you threw at us today. Yeah. Biography of Feynman, Biography of Anne Frank, and then mm-hmm. two fun ones, City of Spies and Teen Boat. Teen so Bo. whatever absolutely. your taste. Yeah, absolutely. Go to the collection at AADL.org mm-hmm. and uh, and leave a note. They have uh, comment cards you can fill out, say, more please, and then they will get more graphic novels. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. We promise. Oh, Eric Eric in the uh, chat posted the link to where to pre-order the Teen Boat advanced review copies. Uh Okay, cool. Thank you, Eric. All right. Gosh, Sharon, I am so glad that we got to have this discussion on the show, and we need to talk more about this stuff in the future. So, Mm -hmm. um, And thank you. I mean, just just publicly, thank you for everything that you have helped make happen in this town. When I was going over this list, this was as exciting to me as when I opened up that Axis and saw that comics had its own section in it. Right, right. And this is amazing what you've managed to help bring about over the last couple of years. So, gosh, on behalf of all comics, thank you for that. (laughs) Um, but but also thanks for being on the show. This was fun. Oh, it was fun. So um, are you on any of the social networks where cartoonists can aggregate around you and, uh, and, 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 and I beg you to, for wisdom? You have invited me. I've got to get on Google+. Plus. I apologize. <laughs> I just have not gotten that done, and you've had that invite for quite some time. But at any rate, I'll try to get on to Google+. Plus Once you do, sure. I'll let people know. So then you can, yeah. you'll, you'll probably be followed by several hundred cartoonists like right away. Right. <laughs> just, so. just Just pelting you with questions. How yeah. do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do that? <laughs> Facebook is fine too. Oh, that's right. You are on the Facebooks, but mm-hmm. I don't know if you yeah. have a public account, do you? Or is it um, a private account? I guess it's a private account at this point. Yeah. 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 So you don't have like a fan page yet, but we can make you one. <laughs> <laughs> the Sharon Iverson fan page. Uh, okay. Well, uh, okay. So Sharon Iverson of AADL.org. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks everybody for downloading and listening. Uh, we record every week, every Wednesday at 1230 PM Eastern standard time uh, or Eastern time, uh, you know, technology permitting. We've started a little late today. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can, you can find the show currently at comicsaregreat.com. Just click the podcast link. You'll get to it. And uh, soon to be carried on AADL.org. So un- until next time, everybody, thank you all for listening. Uh, I've been Jersey Droz of comicsaregreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye.